Hello, it's Sarah. And I figured I'd do uh, a little canvas board today. This is the Artist Loft already prepped type of canvas board that I happen to have in my stash because I made this little um, piece of journal soup yesterday. Um, and I thought I'd do a tutorial because um, I was trying a new technique a brayer technique that's really kind of where it, it all started a couple things kind of snowballed into um, this piece but I just wanted to try it on some card and it didn't really come out the way I had hoped it's by um, Leandra does it for paper artsy and they use um, chalk paint and translucent paint and I'm just using my acrylics that I've had forever I did use some um, metallics as well because I figured they would be translucent um, and you know I fixed it and I fudged with it and I played with it but I don't want to do that on camera because it's just going to take too long so I'm going to just stick with a basic um, brushed on background uh, so I'm just going to start using this canvas just the way it is I'm not going to I think it's gessoed already and I think I'm going to start with a light, I have a bunch of blues. I want it to be a, a night sky. So I just pulled some, some blues that are kind of um, teal and light baby blue, bunch, a bunch of different colors. And I'm just going to see what happens. Uh, I'm going to start with light, and I'm going to add some um, metallics as well. But I'm going to start with light colors first. I always add water to my brush. It just makes the paint move easier, and I'm using this big old, I think it's a one inch, yeah, one inch, just a Craft Smart cheapy brush. Um, and I'm just going to start adding color to the background. I'm going to be putting in some houses on the bottom. So I, I'm really not concerned. You know what? I'm going to get a um, paper plate because that way I can save my palette for, um, I need more paint than that. Um, so yeah, I don't really need to film this, but I figured, what the heck. See, now I didn't put water in the, in the brush that time, and you can see how much more opaque it, it shows up. I'm just adding a little more water to get it to move. Because it doesn't have to be opaque yet, and I'm hoping that um, with, the, with the other colors I use, that all, well, this blue is going to show through. Because I don't want the, I mean, I could just paint it a dark blue if I wanted a night sky, but I want it to have hints of other colors. And that's really, really wet, so I'm going to dry it a little bit. And then I think I'm going to do, I think I'm just going to go right to this Victorian blue. And just start slip slapping it, kind of here and there. And then we'll do some stenciling. I have this old stencil. Had it forever. I'm going to put some stars on there, some big ones. And then I have this, uh, where'd it go? This one. I have little stars. I think I'm going to do them in like yellow or white. Alright, that's good enough. So let's get some of this like teal. And I'm going to slip slap that on there. I didn't even clean off my brush. I'll go around the edges with um, the darkest color to kind of frame it. But yeah, that's what I want. I kind of want it to look chippy choppy. So yeah, I, I loved what Leandra does on Paper Artsy. She has like a whole... Um, three a three video series of um, what she calls uh, let me see brayer backgrounds but then the first one I saw was one that she called master boards and it was the challenge that paper artsy had done for December I think it was the last um, challenge for I don't need to worry about the bottom actually so now I'm going to go into this fallow blue which is a totally different color blue anywho um yeah, it's, a, it's an awesome technique, and a, she uses a, a smooth um, paper, like one of their um, 
type of uh, card stocks. And I used gessoed um, cardboard, you know. And I don't know if it got, I mean, I still liked the way it turned out. But it wasn't what I wanted for this particular piece as much as, you know, it would be just like a cool background in general for something else. So I think I'm just going to go with this slip slapped one, which this is looking really pretty. I'm liking it. And this is kind of based on some things that I've seen that I've liked. And so I wanted to kind of make it my own type type thing. Um, there's been a lot of talk about copyright. Oh, I really like that. That is looking good. Um, it's bright, but it kind of looks night sky-ish too. And I'm going to put, um, like I said, the stars on there. So do I want to stop? I like it. I think I like it. Maybe a little more light blue. So you can keep going with this and then, you know, you'll end up making mud. So I don't want to get too ahead of myself. Um, and then I'll lose like the dark blue. But anyway, hopefully there's not too much glare. But that looks so pretty. Like, I like it. I think I'm going to stop. I kind of like those brush marks too. I don't know. See if I if I don't stop. All right, I'm putting my brush in water. Got to stop. All right, I'm gonna dry this, um, and I'll be right back. Okay, so that's dry. I'm going to get um, some of this Martha Stewart Pearl. This is cornflower. So this is one of the darker blues. But I hopefully I might mix it. But I'm gonna use the biggest star. Maybe the medium. I don't know. I think the biggest. I'm just going to go for it and see what happens. And this is cut and dry foam. I don't know. I have it, so I'm using it. And I'm going to load my sponge with some of that and maybe a little bit of this phthalo on there too. And just sponge in a couple stars in the sky in different places. Hopefully they'll be... Um, metallic -y. Yeah, they're looking metallic -y. Um, Can you see them? Yeah, cool. going to go to the medium size star. Do I still want that same color? Yeah. And do a couple of those. And then I'm going to do the small, next smallest. Should I change? I think I'm going to do um, like a brighter metallic ice blue pearl. And I'll mix that with, I don't think I want them straight metallic. I don't know. I'm going to mix it with a little bit of that light blue. So it's a little bit metallic-y. Oh, that's very bright. A little too bright. I'm not down. I'm not down with that. Just taking a... Uh, baby wipe and just wipe it. I'm um, going to make it a little less bright. I hope. Go back. I think I'm just going to use, I want it to be a night sky. Like I don't want to lose the, um, the darkness because I'm going to put a lot of, um, well I want the angel. She's going to be like done with white so she'll show up really bright. Um, what else? My moon. See that's I have so much paint on my sponge that it's kind of like a blob. But there's also some of the light paint left on there, so I'm happy about that. I'm going to go to the much smaller one. I think I need a dark one down here. The houses are going to um, be down there, but I still think I want... Um, some to peek from behind. So yeah, I'm going to add a little bit more of that fallow to my palette and um, mix that with that dark pearl and put a couple big ones down here. Because they'll poke from behind the uh, houses. Yes. 
I'm gonna go over that one. Good. I think that might be all I need. That might be all I need of those. Let me see if it looks. Starry. Does it look starry? I think it does look starry. Good. I like it. All right. So I'm going to set that aside, set this aside. And I have this stamp I actually carved myself because I didn't have a stamp that um, put my stays on. Here it is. I have a teal blue and a regular, this is called um, azure blue. Sorry, I'm not being able to find it. Anywho. Actually, this is this is too. This doesn't. I'm gonna just use this one. Um, but yeah, so here's my stamp. I used. I just used these. I traced. I guess that one and a couple of the littler ones and just made three stars. So let's put a couple of them on here. I wonder if um, it's dry enough. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, you can see them. Cool. So this is where the mixed media comes into play with my um, acrylic painting background. And that's what I'm starting to really enjoy. The, the fact that um, I can use all these skills that I've learned for years I painted. I did um, nothing but acrylic painting for like 15 years. So now with all the mixed media and um, stamping, I, I'm just... I'm loving combining everything and um, feeling like I can create something original by um, using those all those different things. So is that enough? I think this is getting cute. All right, maybe here, here. It's never enough stamping, is it? You can always you can go crazy with it. <clears throat> All right. All right there. Okay, that's enough. Uh, now I'm going to start, you know, I'm not sure if that's dark enough. It's interesting because it's like different on. I like that. All right, sorry. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I'm going to dry this and prep, get ready for some other stuff, and then we'll move on to the next part. Be right back. So I decided, I on this one I wanna add a little more contrast and I wanna do some black stamping. So I have my, my little trusty old script stamp and my trusty circles. This is um Diane, Diane Reevely, pretty sure. But yeah, so I want to add a little extra something to the sky on this one because I have a little bigger, this was so narrow, there wasn't a lot of space. So I think this is going to have a lot more um, of the background showing. So I just figured it couldn't hurt to add a little bit more. And this is actually on top of the stars too. So it'll kind of, I don't know, I don't know what it'll do. We'll just have to see. So that's good. I'm going to do these little circles too. I love these. Um, just a hint of contrast and circles instead of stars. Um, I can't see it that well because there's so much shine um, all over the piece. And I don't see any. Yeah, I do see circles over there. All right, sorry. I'm. I got. A, I was looking in the camera, but I want to look at the piece itself. I think that might be plenty. I'm gonna stop. Now, the last thing I'll do for my background before we get started with um, getting the other elements ready, the houses and stuff. I want to just float and. For those of you who have seen my videos before, floating is a technique that I use quite a bit. Um, to do my shading and there's a lot of ways that you can do shading on a especially on a mixed media piece so you don't have to have this skill but um, it's just something I know how to do 
So I like to use it and it involves an angle brush, water and paint, and you just kind of make a gradual um, gradation of color so it goes from dark to light. You float the color across the bristles. So I'm corner loading my brush into Payne's Gray and then I'll move my paper palette over. This is like a waxy paper and this is what you can use to um, blend the color into your brush. But so you want it to go from dark to light. That's the idea. And I'm really being heavy handed with it. I'm not being delicate because I just want to slap it kind of on the piece up against the edge. And because it's a, a canvas, it doesn't, it's not smooth. I'm used to doing this technique on a smooth surface like that I've prepped um, by sanding it and getting it really nice and smooth. And that way, it, this technique is just beautiful. It really is. It's one of my favorites um, when, when you use it on a, a delicate piece, but it can be used for mixed media too. So you can see, and um, a lot of mixed media artists, artists, artists use this, uh, they do this by sponging or um, just rubbing with a baby wipe like there's or a lot of us obviously use the uh, the Tim Holtz inks or inks and we use a sponge applicator and do it with ink but this is just my little way that I like to do it because I have that little tool in my toolbox and you know what I'm gonna do too I'll just slip slap a little bit into the background. Um, but I'm going to go around my angel and I'll go around my moon and my houses and just get uh, them to blend into the canvas that way. But I want it to look a little bit darker. It's pretty bright. I love it though. I think it's turning out really cool. Um, I still want you guys to check out Leandra's video for Paper Artsy because that um, the brayer technique is super neat. Um, I loved it and it just didn't work for this for what I was doing I don't think. I mean I made it work but alright so that's just looking good. It's a little darker in this area. I think I'm gonna have to hit it over here. Alright so and then I'm gonna have to dry this again. Oh boy. But yeah looking good. Alright stop. See, there, there's a, always a time you have to stop. I have to stop myself. I'm liking it. I think it looks good. All right. Um, so to do the houses, I actually created this template out of a, um, a piece of file folder. And I just sketched it out. And I'll show you. I'll try and do it again. Mm, I'm going to sketch out an angel, too, and show you how... You can make your angel and the moon. Um, you can use a stamp if you have one. You can use whatever you have. But I wanted to kind of try and make it my own. And again, I think I'm saying that a lot because <laughs> I've had an issue recently with copyright. And there's a lot of talk about... Uh, about that issue with YouTube and so I just wanted to see what I could do um, in order to create my own work that I'm publishing on YouTube and not step on anybody's toes. So basically I'll set this aside. I'm going to take this piece of file folder and I'm going to just start. This is actually, I cut this one because if I do want to use it, it, it fits a little bit better on this 10, 8x10 um, canvas board. This one was just I made this one for the little piece of um, cardboard I had yesterday. But basically, um, you kind of decide how high. So this side of the, it's the same size. So that's a good way to go. And I'm just going to use like, I have, <coughs> I'm going to start cleaning up my workspace. I don't want this to get uh, very messy. So sorry, I'm going to throw a few, few things away. All right. Um, I have this pencil, graphite drawing pencil, Pro Art HB. I don't know what that means. I think it's a hard lead. Okay. Anyway, so I started, I kind of started in the middle, and I started by um, creating this roof that's like this. It's got this style of roof. 
and I'm just going to kind of work on roofs right now um, and that way I can anyway plan out my design and then I gave it a garage it's kind of a short little garage which almost looks like a house or it's just an addition right then next to that I wanted to change it up and put like a tall house so <clears throat> actually I did it opposite yesterday um, but that's going to be in the furthest front so this one's going to be um, I'm just showing you how you can do this on your own it's a little it's further behind that house and then we're going to do another one of these so I'm going to do it shorter And but see, I want to, <clears throat> I want to kind of come all the way to the edge of the paper. And I didn't do that yesterday. You know what's funny? When I'm on camera, it never goes the way. Like yesterday, I did it with no problem. I just sketched this thing out like psh, it was nothing. Like I, <laughs> and it just came together. So, but basically, you know, it doesn't have to be um, perfect. You're just all right, so this is going to be a pointy one. That's a very tall pointy one, right? And then we'll go back to flat again. And you can make them, like I said, it's your neighborhood. See, that, that could have been there. So then what I decided to do too, like on this one, I gave this one a porch type thing. Or not necessarily a porch, but like a an overhang for the front door so you can put the door in here and put little like little square windows I mean and this is up to you because this could just be an illusion of whatever you want it to be and I just put windows here because that's not that's a garage um, and then I did put like detail lines on these roofs some of them um, like on this one I went this way so, I mean, it's up to you, but I also gave this little house an extra roof, too, like a roof here with just a door. Like, that just has a door. This one had a, a circular window and, like, a t just a tall door with an extra, like, window there. And just, you know, so just whatever you want to do. Create your own architecture. But I just wanted to show you that's basically what I did. Then I cut out around the edges <clears throat> of this. And then the next thing I did was add this purple glow. See, that's why it's all purple. So I used this as a template. I'm just going to use this one because it'll save us time. And um, my videos are very long anyway. But I put this purple glow with a sponge. And I kind of like that. I'm wondering if I do it, want to do it differently. No, I'm going to do it that way. So I have another piece of cut and dry foam. And this is the purple um, Martha Stewart, uh, what's the color? Purple Martin, but it's a pearl. It's a pearl paint. So it'll be, it'll be kind of sheer. And just use the sponge and basically pull. I'm going to set it down on the piece and I've just evened this out because it was a little short for this one but I don't mind and it's just that straight um, purple martin I'm just going to pull like this kind of like I, I don't know a glow like it's a sunset maybe you could do this with pinks too or yellows or I don't know any color you want really I think I'm going to pull it all the way down the side since I have so much room. But I didn't, I didn't take it too high. Just kind of kept it even, I guess. And that's it. Can you see that? Yeah, that's all I'm going to do. And it leaves you a, a line of now what I want to do is base coat that. But before I do that, I'm going to go away and do that off camera so it doesn't take that much time. I want to do, I'm going to sketch out a little angel and a moon and show you guys how to do it and then um, I'll put, I'll do mine on my piece but I just want to show you so for the angel 
um, it's just a basic shape. She's kind of flying, right? She's she's got. I only show one wing, but you just kind of get a little body shape coming down. Um, I'm gonna adjust as I go, but that's basically her neck, and then her back comes down, and then her dress kind of flares out and has like a. <clears throat> It can even be a little bit wider. Um, her arm, I, I don't know, I might want to do her arm just going back. You could have her arm just going back like that. And you could have you could have another arm showing from the front too. So I mean there's so many things you could do. Um, her head, I don't want it to be too big or too um, I want it to face front, so can you see what I'm doing? I wanted her to, her to just, it's a very whimsical little angel, but her wing is just going to be like coming off of her shoulder blade and have like a, a little bit of a curly cue and a scallop, maybe three on the bottom. That might be too, it's too big. I think I'm going to change. I want it to be a little more petite. So yeah, you can make it however you're, I mean, there's wings that like are stamps. Like I have stamp wings and I have, um, I have like applique wings and all types of stuff, but you can just make her any way you want. I like this shape wing better. It's much more petite. I like that. Um, and then she has like her, you can just see a little foot coming out the back. Just make like a little ankle and a little foot. And that's all. It doesn't have to be. It's just whimsical. And like for hands, I do not do hands. I do little mittens. Little mitten hands. And um, let's see, where would her thumb be pointing down? <laughs> and just another little mitten and that's it and like you can give her um, more detail if you want you know um, for hair I'm just gonna keep it really simple I could put pigtails or something but I like to just you could just give bangs like she could just have bangs and really keep it simple like that or you could do like a, a more part in the middle type hair um, and then for the halo I just do like an oval like this and then when you paint it you actually it gives a more dimensional if you kind of make this be the front and that like it's like that's the back and then I'll brighten this up and darken that so you give it a little bit of more dimension but it's basically just an oval that's a little big too I think proportionately I want it to be a little smaller on top of her head um, so just like a smaller and it still comes out big so that's the angel and then I'm gonna put little strokes in here like little comma strokes along there to make it look like feathers or you know um, but I kind of like this one with the two arms I only gave her one arm yesterday I like this one um, but her body should come in front of that arm and um, then for the moon Hopefully I was in the shot. Oh man, but there it is. I really don't know if I was in the shot. Um, but then for the moon, and you can put any details that you want on there at all. So for the moon, he's kind of like, um, you just start at the top, but you kind of make him kind of kick around, like his chin is up higher. So you come down, and then this is his nose and you make that like that and a little nostril and then he has a smile and then his chin goes up like that something like that and then his eye can be as big or as little as you want but that's the basic shape sometimes I get it better than others and but that's a that's a pretty good like man in the moon type thing right so that's all it's gonna be this is basically what I think I'm gonna do now she could be holding something like maybe she could be holding a heart and we could do that have like a ribbon wrapped around her hand that looks cute 
Um, what else? That's about it, really. Um, I'm going to do a lot of the details on the houses with my Posca paint pens because they're super easy to work with um, and just get in those nooks and crannies. So this is just really very um, straightforward, this part. She's going to be a little bit of a flip. This is more technique oriented. He's just kind of painted too. So I think I'm going to um, go ahead and get those on my piece and base coat in the bottom. I'll show you. I'm going to I'll start base coating this and then you can see what I mean by that. But I'm not not going to do it all on camera because it's just it's very time consuming. Um, and just because yesterday I did it with um, this flesh tone color because I just had it on my desk. That's what I used and I really liked the way the houses looked. Um, the way I did them with this. So I'm using like a flesh tone. It's a very like kind of peachy. It's not even that peachy, but um, you can make it any color you want. But you do. I do need to, I just want to change the, um, from blue. I don't want it to be blue. I, because Anyway, um, so that the colors that I put on top of here are going to show true. Um, I'm just going to use like a big flat brush. Do I have a big, yeah, I have this one. I like this size. This is a good size for base coating. It's a 14 and I'm adding water to my brush because it'll just make the paint move better than just going straight into this puddle without water on my brush and it, it wouldn't move and I'm loading my brush with paint. I'm pulling into that puddle and pushing it into the bristles so that I get a nice um, and then I'm just going to basically cover this whole area here with this color because, um, like I said, when I paint the houses, they'll show up a little truer. The colors will be a little truer. And I like to use a flat brush to base coat because, and this is called base coating. This is what in the acrylic painting world we would call base coating. Um, just to get um, your base on there and then we use those floating techniques and other techniques to create the details of the piece. So if I say base coating, that's what I mean. I'm just putting a base of color down and um, like if I was doing a Santa suit or something, the base would probably be red. And then the shading and highlight colors would be light for sh highlight. I would use a lighter color and dark for shading. So um, that's what I'm going with. So yeah, so I don't need to do this all on camera, but you see how I use the chiseled edge of the brush to make a straight line and not leave a ridge of paint up there. That's from years of base coating. I get a very smooth surface that way and you don't get a lot of ridges and bumps. And on a mixed media piece, it isn't really that important because, um, it isn't, it's not that style. It's a little more free. So it's kind of nice that, um, oopsie, I, kinda, I don't know if I was watching where I was going with this. Yeah, I think I went over the line a little bit. Um, there was a little rooftop there. Anywho, um, all right, I'm going to go away and I'm going to sketch on my angel and sketch on my moon off camera so I can focus and then I'll show you the next step. All right, be right back. Okay, I just wanted to show you something. So I'm pretty happy with the shape of her and rather than taking my chances on um, sketching it on my piece, you can trace over this drawing. So sketch it out in your sketchbook um, and then take a piece of tracing paper <clears throat> and trace over your design uh, with just as best you can with just one, you know, one line so it's not as sketchy looking. Um, and then you can trace it onto your piece and you have no worries 
uh, that it won't be exactly how you wanted it, right? This is what um, I did for years as a decorative painter. Uh, other people would design the piece and then we would um, use their line drawing and work with that. So you just would trace their line work and that's why the, all this copyright stuff was a little bit um, interesting for me because I've been doing this for so long I didn't realize that I was that it was wrong to do and um, so that's my basic drawing I think I'm just gonna stick with that um, to, to get it on the piece now I'm gonna kind of figure out where I oh, this is still wet but you just figure out where you want it on the piece and I kind of want her a little off center and I'll put my moon here but um, I think like right about there and I have a piece of this color graphite this is like a white it shows up white or a light gray on the piece just stick it underneath make sure that you're on the right side of the graphite because one side makes um, a c color and the other side you won't get anything put it under and just hold it in place and I use a stylus which is uh, you know one of these guys <clears throat> one of these <clears throat> excuse me and just trace over your lines and then it will come onto your background so I'm gonna go away and come back after I've done that okay I am back I've base coated everything into now where I can do the details because you don't need to watch me do that it just takes long so what we're going to do first, <clears throat> I want to do some shading around to set them into the piece. So I'm going to use some, um, yeah, I want to do this first because then I'm going to do the wash on her and everything else is floating and um, I'll do a little, I'll show you a little bit of it, but then I'll do most of it, the majority of it off camera so that it doesn't, I want to just shorten the video. Oh, by the way, um, I based in my heart with a little bit of red mixed with pink, mixed with white, I mean, to make a pink because it'll just cover better when I, I'll show you that now. So if I just, because I, oh, where's my brush? Uh, because that's pink, now I take the red and, um, if I base that in, I don't want my camera to shake. It see, it just stays truer red. And actually, I think this is either cad red or true red. It's a beautiful red color. I was gonna do it um, the color of the roofs, which is this is I'll tell you that in a minute. More of a burgundy, but I kind of wanted the heart to be red. I think I'll shade it with that color. Um, that's just you know. Probably, I should have done it with the same color that I did the roofs. I did this the darker roofs with black green. Well, originally, I was thinking Christmassy, so I did it red and green. But this is like a burgundy. Uh, what color is it? Cranberry wine. I I did these roofs with, and it's just one coat. I didn't really. Um, I just got it solid. I didn't get it opaque. Um, and then I just kind of drew in lines with a pencil so I could see where my houses start and finish. I didn't put all the details on yet. I just wanted to have an idea because I'm going to show you how I paint them. Um, I've kind of been trying to create a face look for her and I'm coming up with that. And I base coated him in with just yellow, like an opaque, this is cad yellow. And I did get it pretty opaque. He's not too see-through. Um, I also based in the angel with um, midnight blue because I just wanted it to be the undercoating for the white that we're going to put on top of it. It's just going to be more, um, not monotone, um, what is the word I'm trying to say? Uh, 
it'll all be the same. I can't think of the word I'm trying to say. All right, but, but the very first thing I want to do, I'm going to take some more of that Payne's Gray, and that's just a color that I love to do um, my shading, my like um, my finishing shading. I want to go around here and just set that down in, bring the darkness there, and then have it get lighter. I'm going to use my three quarters inch angle. I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's a actually five eighths inch angle brush. And it, I just like this because it holds a lot of water. Um, it's by American Painter, and they don't even sell those at um, Michaels or AC Moore anymore. Where did I put that paint spray? Over here. So I'm corner loading, and I'm going to do a float. Um, but this is just, you'll see, you'll see the difference um, it'll make. I'm going to put the paint edge up against the houses and just pull it along the whole... I guess like horizon line, right? The whole area where the sky touches the houses. And it peters out. I also have a mop brush where you can kind of soften it a little if you need to. But this will, it should be dark at the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, darkest up against the houses and then lighten up uh, as it goes into the sky. So this side of the brush has water on it. And then the side of the brush closest to the roof has paint. And I'm a very heavy-handed painter, so it's quite a bit of paint. And that's why I tend to use a mop so I can soften it a little bit. Like right there is a ton of paint. I'm going to pull it out a little bit. I actually didn't um, like the way that was, so I'll just soften it. That's, that's actually not... That was totally not a good example and now I'm dripping um, anyway so but I want to do this around all of the pieces I'm gonna do it around the angel um, so I'll just show you a little bit and then I'm gonna come back when I'm done that too because I just don't want to take too long it's it is time-consuming it, it is a it's not a quick process necessarily and so I want to do this in um, real time. I don't want to speed up the video, but I just want you to get an idea. Ooh, Maya just said the S word. Ooh. Maybe it, maybe it wasn't. They're playing um, video games. Am I in the shot? Yeah. Um, it was another gorgeous day today. In South Jersey I know we're pretty lucky in South Jersey that we get such mild weather sometimes all right so for this little angel hopefully I'm gonna all right you know what I'm gonna do I gotta move the camera a little bit closer to me there we go because <clears throat> then I can hold her okay sorry about that um, sticking the paint up under her arm I'm going to go all the way around her. And if it goes on the, um, the dress a little, it's okay because I'm going to be painting that. And I'm just going back to my palette, my pa paper palette, and picking up more paint from there because um, that's, I pick up a lot of paint. Anyway, so that's kind of going to help. Um, so I'll go off camera and do it, but I'm going to show you, I'm going to continue on for a minute, um, go around the moon the same way, just stick the color side up against him and pull all the way around and it just darkened that in there. Oops, I don't want to necessarily get it on him. Oops, I'm probably not even in the shot. And I turn the piece as I go because it just helps. Um, and I'm not too worried about I, that I got it on them because I'm going to shade. Um, what else? Uh, Alright, so that's basically I'm going to do that. Whether like here and there, maybe some more. If I need it, like this is just very wet, but 
Let me think. Do I want it? I'll look at it at the end and decide if I want more. I'm going to go all, finish going all around her in a minute. But how I paint the houses is the very same way using that big brush. But I'm going to use this Victorian blue. I love this color. And what other color should I use? I want to use like this. Oh, this azure blue. They're kind of similar. I'm going to use that and like maybe the thallow. No. Sorry, I don't know why it's taking me. I'm having a hard time. These two colors. These are one's really light, <clears throat> but it'll be pretty. All right, so this is called turquoise. And I'm going to side load my brush. And by side load, I mean blot, get a little paint on the corner, and put it down on the palette. And I kind of walk away, but I'm pressing the paint into the bristles so that it goes from paint to water. That's the idea. And I, w I don't mind having that much on my brush because I like the effect. And because this is a, a mixed media piece, I don't have to be as careful as I would if I was on a regular painted piece. And I got it on the roof. But I'm going to go down all the left sides of the houses and just have a, a, a float like I probably will go on the other side of that house too but I don't want to do it and I see I have a q-tip if you get it on somewhere you don't want you can just take a q-tip and it'll fix it I'm gonna do all the the green roofs with the same color so I'm just gonna do the same thing get some of the and mainly I want to go under under the roof and down the left side. So only on the green houses. I'm trying to watch um, not to be so, um, what am I trying to say? Anyway, it's so shiny. I mean, it wasn't perfect because I should do it in two steps. I think I want to take that off. Look, I mean, and I don't have to, but I'm just being, I want to show you that in a better way. All right, so I'm just going to do under the roofs right now because when it's a float, you have to, um, you can't go over where you already did it or you'll pick up what you did. Um, anyhow, so I'm reloading my brush and I'm just going to go down um, in one direction right now under the roof and do the same thing on this this one just under the roof actually I can do one other thing on this house because it's not touching what I just did I can do um, right here she's singing some type of song kids are loud aren't they <laughs> see I just touched see how I can all right um, what else? All right, so that's basically how you paint your houses. All right, let me do that other color. What other color did I pick? Oh, man, now I can't remember. Okay, that was turquoise. I'll do this Victorian teal. I think this is different. Yeah. I'm going to do the Victorian teal. And just going to do under the roofs to show you guys how I do it. And then I'm going to go off camera. Um, it just takes, it takes long. You don't need to watch me do every single thing. I'm going to show you the main ideas. Actually, we'll do, um, I'll go off camera and do a couple more things and then I'll show you. All right, so I'm going to start under this roof. And go all the way across. And then I get it on this house. I did. The angle I'm painting is kind of weird. Oh, I pulled it off too, but that's okay. Um, go here. And under this roof. 
So I'm going to kind of start on this side this time so I can tuck it into this corner. <clears throat> That's why I like using an angle brush. Um, going to go up against the houses on both sides. <clears throat> I'll fix that when it's dry. You gotta let some of it dry before you um, continue on. Uh, <clears throat> so I can do here and what else? I'll fix that. But that's basically how I did the houses. And when we add the details, the houses really pop, so it was cute. Um, for the, uh, I'm going to use Burnt Sienna. Where is it? Burnt Sienna for the little, um, the shading on my, I, I want to call that a snowman all the time. I don't know why. That is so weird. I'm just going to a smaller angle brush because I use so much paint. This can just save me from making too much paint. And I'm just going to slide this around the back of this moon. And I'll highlight the front and make him brighter. I'm going to give him a rosy cheek, too. So he just, it just makes him have a little more depth. Um, we can shade the roofs the same way as we did the houses. Um, I would just do it with the same color, so black green for the dark roofs and this red mixed with a little black. That's all I'm going to do. Like so for the, um, this is called cranberry wine. I'll show you how it just, and I'll put a little bit of black on my palette. And I just brush mix it basically. Um, you only need a tad of black to make it darker. But I'm going to use a really big brush. Uh, no, I'm just going to go with my 5 eighths inch. And I'm going to load it first with the just the cranberry wine. So just that. And then a tad little bit of black. And it's mainly black, but it has a little tint of that cranberry. And I'm going to go down again the left sides. And I'll probably go along the bottom too. We'll see. And same, I have enough on my palette that I can still, I still have enough left. Now this one I'll probably just go up against this house. So because that would be where it would be shaded. And then <clears throat> on these little roofs, again on the left side. And when it dries, you'll see. But that's basically all I'm going to do. It just gives it a little bit. And I'll, you know what? I'm just going to use black. I'm not even going to mix them. I'll just use black for um, those roofs. They're black green. Black green is a great color to shade with when you're doing um, a green thing. You just use black green to shade with. So stick it in the ed in the corner there and just pull it down and then tuck it in the other corner. See how I turn my brush at the end? I'm going to go up against this house and like up against here I think and make it have a, a line. Maybe we'll go down here. Do it a little bit different. And they're wet right now, but it'll calm down. Um, but I love the look of those. Um, so everything's going to be painted like that. Then when I come back, we're going to 
finish our angel and our house is like the finishing. So I'm going to shade everything and then we'll finish everything. Whoops, just got a bunch of water on there. Um, so I think we'll come back and we'll, we'll do the angel next. All right, be back. Yeah, so I am going to, I just drew in where I'm going to put windows and I'm just going to put some of that base color back in the windows as an undercoating for, uh, I'm going to put some yellow in there and make them um, like there's a light on inside. Uh, this I didn't do this on my other one. This is just a giant window. <laughs> um, so that's going to help that. Oh, this is a door. I don't really need it on the door, but that's fine. Uh, that's going to make them stand out more. Uh, all right, so that's the, I get, I'm going to do that to all my windows. And then I've given her some hair, which I'm not loving, but because it's just making her face look so small. Um, but everything's been base coated, and we're going to shade just up against her, um, the top of her hairdo and her foot and her hand. Um, oh, I forgot to trace the, uh, the other arm on there. I changed her arm on here a little bit. Oh, you know what? We don't need that yet. That's why. Because we're going to put a wash of color. But anyway, this is how we're going to shade. I'm just using a little flesh, like a dark shading flesh. And I'm just going to take it and go up against the top of her hair. That's kind of... It's kind of dark, so I'm just pushing it back a little. You know why it's dark? Because I put too much paint. That's my MO. I put a lot of paint. And I'm going to put some here. So that gives the illusion that there's like a little dimension there. Okay. So I also, I shaded my um, moon. Let's do a little bit of pearl. I don't have a yellow pearl color, which would be perfect, but I'm just going to do a white pearl, uh, pearlescent, and I'm going to put that on the front, like, side of him, up against the front, just for a little shine. I'm also going to give him a rosy cheek and a blue eye. I just like to add color. And I'm, I'm going to be outlining everything too, so that's really going to make it um, pop. So I'm going to take, what color blue? Just a little bit of this blue that I have out on my palette and give him a little bit of a blue eye. Give him a big eye. And I can't really see it, huh? It looks white. Um... All right, I, you know what, maybe I'll do a part two. Part two is gonna be the angel and everything. All right, so I'm gonna go away and I'm gonna come back and we'll do a part two. All right, thanks.